If you want to start learning hacking, you need to know Linux. Linux is very essential. You can literally not learn how to ethically hack without Linux. So that begs the question, what is Linux? This is my Linux machine right here. It is called Kali Linux. Now, Linux, you can think of it like an OS, even though it's not an OS technically. Technically, it's a kernel, but a kernel is kind of what the OS is on top of. It's just like the underlying functions of an OS. An OS stands for operating system. So yes, Linux is a kernel. And this OS is a distribution of Linux. So right now I'm on Kali Linux, but there's also Parrot OS, Arch Linux, things like that. So people can choose which distribution of Linux they prefer and then use that. So basic overview, that is Linux. Now, if we go here, we open a terminal, which is what you can do all the hackery things on, if you will. You definitely need to know how to navigate the terminal, but we'll get more into that in a minute. So as you can see, it looks like just any other OS. Up here, you have the file system, home, the actual file system, trash, and then your files, just like any OS, Windows or Mac. And this is very small, but you have all of your hacking tools built in directly to this OS. So for example, you have Burp Suite, which is for web app hacking, Derb, enumeration, InMap, which is uh, network scanning. So you literally have all of these just built into this Linux distribution, which is pretty awesome. And most all of these that I just showed can be run on the terminal, AKA command line as well. Now, all of this is for educational purposes only. This is in a lab environment. Everything I'm doing is perfectly legal. This can be used for unethical purposes, but everything is ethical. Don't use this for unethical purposes because that is illegal. So just a disclaimer. We kind of do everything from the command line, which is this box right here. This box, the command line, is the same thing as the GUI, which is the pictures and the icons and the stuff you click on. So this equals, as you can see, desktop documents. And because of the file system, you see desktop documents. I have no documents, desktop, things like that. And that command I just did is ls which means you are listing everything in your current directory. So right now we're in Kali. If we do PWD, which stands for print working directory, we're in home, Kali. So for example, ls, you see these blue things. These are directories. So if we do CD desktop, we are now in desktop. So you can ls list everything that is in the desktop. And these are directories too. So you can have directories inside of directories and then files and then things like that. So for example, if we wanted to create a new directory and have some files in it, we would do mkdir, which stands for make directory. And then you put the name of the directory. So that's just going to be the name of my directory. And you do ls. And as you can see, here's our newly made directory. So we can go inside the newly made directory. You're inside of it, ls, nothing because we don't have anything. So if we wanted to create a file, which hackers can create files, put malicious code in it, uh, create malware, things like that. So to do the same, we do nano and then the name of the file we want to create. So we press enter and then it takes us inside the file and we can write whatever we want. So we can do that. You could do a little shebang, exclamation point slash bin slash bash, which is to start some bash scripting. That is just how you would create a file, put some code in there, exit, yes, ls, we have it. And to read it, we do cat and there you go. I don't know what cat stands for. I used to know, not anymore, but cat is how you read files. And then all of this you can find on the Kali Linux blog. You can see all the tools and what they do. So for example, John, which is John the Ripper, which is a password hash cracker. So you get someone's password hash, which is an obfuscated version of their password, and then crack it via John and then get their password. So 
It is all pretty cool. And this is all really just the tip of the iceberg. Once you start to go down the rabbit hole, there's literally so much you could talk about with Linux. It's actually insane. There's like so much stuff you can do. It's extremely customizable. It's great. Another thing that is literally on the internet is Exploit Database, which has a database of a lot of exploits that people do use against other computers, web servers, things like that. So for example, this one, Microsoft Brokering File System Windows 11 version 22H2 Elevation of Privilege. You can download the exploit and then view the code down here, proof of concept, which is a demonstration of exploits working. So this demonstrates an interactive system shell exploit for CVE 2025-49677, which CVEs is just a way to classify different exploits, but that's for another time. It leverages scheduled tasks in a looping batch script running as system to execute arbitrary commands with NT authority slash system privileges and interactively returns command output. So this is remote code execution, but you do have to run it as administrator, which it's still cool, but run as administrator. And here I am booting up the Metasploit framework, which Metasploit has a collection of 2,519 exploits 1,607 payloads, 49 encoders, 9 evasion. So Metasploit is just a collection of different exploits that you can just run type exploit and just execute them. And it's pretty cool, which I have multiple videos on how to use Metasploit. And I have some attack demonstrations on my channel. I'll link them up there and in the description if you want to check them out. That is pretty much the basics of Linux of Kali going through some cool hacking tools, hacking software, only to be used for ethical purposes in a lab. So make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I will see you in the next video.